Let's stand and sing, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus."
come and preach. Uh, we're going to let him preach from down there this morning, though, because uh, uh, being weak, you know, he, he's still getting up. I mean, he sounds great, but he, he's just weak, and that's to be expected. But I want to read you something, all right? 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Oh, I turned to the wrong book. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10 says, And he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. So his body may be a little weak this morning, but the power of Christ is that just lets Christ shine a little bit stronger. Okay. So I'm going to pray for you and then you come and preach. Okay. Father, we thank you for sparing Brother Garnet, letting him be with us this morning. We just pray that the power of Christ would show through his preaching this morning that he would uh, preach Jesus, and lift him up, and that our hearts and lives would be changed. Lord, we ask you to do through your word what you've said it will do, that it will not come back to you void, and that it will do what you sent it to do. We, we just thank you this morning, give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do I need to do anything to this? Okay. How's that? Oh, that's good. <laughs> good morning. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you. It's good to be back at Garfield again. I, uh, I'll apologize right off the bat because this COVID mess has left me kind of emotional. Sometimes I, uh, for no reason at all, I just start crying. So uh, I apologize for any emotional stuff. But uh, anyway, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's been six weeks, folks, since I've been in church. So I'm glad to be back. Good to be in the house of the Lord, what the psalmist David said. <clears throat> so we will, uh, I'll put all that stuff aside. Well, I do want to say <clears throat> thank you for all the good food. You've done it again, Garfield. You stepped up to the plate. And uh, Lynn and I have eaten pretty good. No steaks yet, but other than that, we've eaten pretty good. And uh, you guys have just treated us marvelous, as you always have. Uh, I think one of the best things the Lord ever done was brought me to Lake Garfield. I feel like it anyway. But uh, it's good to see you again. Good to see your smiling face. I hadn't seen too many smiling faces uh, until I got home. Didn't see a lot in the hospital and all that. And you know how that is. That, uh, them places are all right to be when you need them, but I would not want to live there. Amen. Uh, they're just not a fun place to be. But uh, Lord bless you. I thank you for letting me come. You could have told Tim, don't let that guy come around anymore. <laughs> but you didn't, so here I am. And you're going to have to deal with me this morning. But it's so good to see you. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you. I want to uh, just share some things with you this morning from Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter 15. This, like I say, this is the first time I've preached. Well, it's been long than six weeks since I've preached, but it's been uh, about... Uh, well, maybe two months since I preached. Somewhere along that line, isn't it? Where did I go with my handkerchief? I throw it away. I dropped it. It's in my pocket, I know. 
There it is. Not a guy. Thank you, Brother Tim. Luke chapter 15 is a very familiar text. Uh, it is the part of it is the story of the prodigal son. I would imagine that in all of our lives, we would have to admit there may have been one time when we were a prodigal, when we were running. And uh, then we had the opportunity to get back to the Father, to get back to Him. So let me just read a little bit and then we'll, we'll go as the Lord leads. And he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to the his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he divided unto him his living. Unto, I'm sorry, let me back up. He divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. When he had <clears throat> spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his field to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave him. Let's pray. Father, I, I just want to thank you uh, for your goodness, and thank you for letting me be here at Lake Garfield this morning and even let me preach a little bit, Lord. Thank you. I consider it an honor and a privilege, Lord, just to look at your word and you give me an opportunity to share it. Father, just use us as your lips, as your voice. Use us in a way that will bless your people. Maybe help somebody return to the Father today. Maybe encourage someone to uh, look back to the Father and run back to the Father. Lord, uh, I just love you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being so good. You're a good God. And we love you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Getting back to the Father. I think like sometimes, like the prodigal son, we don't even realize we're away from him. We, we do our thing. We go through our ritual. We, uh, we even are religious and all of that. But in all of that, folks, there's a danger of walking away from the Father. I mean... We, we just got so many things that come at us and all that stuff. But it, it, as, you, as you check out the, the younger son here, as you check him out, you know, he took everything the father gave him. The father divided up to him and his brother. His brother got his share. Anyway, when he divided it up, the younger son took all that the father had given him and headed to the far country. He had been in his father's home, we don't know how long, but maybe he got tired of the boundaries his father had set for him. He didn't like those boundaries anymore. He didn't like to be hedged in. He, he wanted to be free. You see, the freedom that he was thinking about and the freedom that the father promised him was two different things. He didn't want his freedom. He wanted to kick out the restraints. He wanted to do his own thing. But his own thing was going to, going to consist of him walking away from the Father. Those are some of the saddest words you're reading about. Do you know what? I mean, hey, that's what he done, folks. He walked away. But in this, in this text, we see a pro not only a prodigal son, but we see a prodigal nation. Israel had, had turned away and ran away from God. Oh yeah, they were still religious. They were still doing that. 
but it was just habit. There was no relationship in it. Folks, we're blessed with an opportunity to have relationship with the Father. Thought about that lately? Relationship with the Father. During my little COVID spell, the Lord done something for me that I'll never get over. And why he done it, I still don't know. But about three or four days into my spell, I didn't even know who I was. I mean, you could have come up and asked me who I was, and I might have thought I was Joe Biden. <laughs> but anyway, two or three days, or maybe four, three or four days, I think it's in the hospital 11 days. Anyway, one time, and I, uh, I think it was unconscious. I'm not quite sure. But it was just like I, I walked up to a great, broad valley. Huge, just wide open. I stood there and looked at it for a while. I knew the Lord was near. I, you could, I don't know how to explain it, but I just knew His presence was near. I remember telling the Lord this. As I looked out at that dark valley, the shadows and all the other things, I said, okay, Lord, if it's time to get it on, let's do it. Let's just do it. If it's time to go, let's go. Let's do it. And it just seemed like after that, the, uh, I started getting better. I think in that situation, I felt like that the Lord was checking me out. Okay, do you want to stay or do you want to go? Do you want to do what I want you to do or not? You see, folks, if we get away from the presence of God, if we, if we get back, or if we go away from the Father, there's some things that we sacrifice. You know, you sacrifice the presence of the Father. Think about that for just a moment. You sacrifice, when you go away from Him, you sacrifice His presence. You're, you're trading His awesome, godly, holy presence for whatever you're going to. We sacrifice His presence. Uh, the psalmist said this, where can I go from my presence? And where can I go from your, my, your spirit? You're not going to get away from it. You can run and run and run and run. And when you get to the other end, guess what? He'll be there waiting on you. You're not going to get away from His presence in, in this sense that He's on my presence, but you're not going to get away from His presence. I mean, you can get away from His presence in this sense that you want to do something else. You can get away from His provisions. Who takes care of you? Who feeds you? Who watches out for you when you're asleep or when you're off doing whatever. Who does that? Who, who makes sure you have clothes on your back? The psalmist said one place, he said, now I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed making bread. God takes care of you. He, he's an awesome God. Ever, everything you need, He provides. Everything you ever will need, He'll provide. Why would you want to walk away from God like that? Why would you want to walk away from an awesome God like that? Yeah, bad business doing that. And then, you know, when you, uh, when you walk away, you walk away from His plan for your life. You remember what Jeremiah said? Uh, the Lord said, told Jeremiah, He said, you know, 
said, I know my thoughts that I think toward you. Did you know God don't have an evil thought toward you? He don't hate you. He loves you. From when you leave, like the prodigal son did, and then finally come to yourself, from the time you do that, he still hadn't hated you. But you know the devil lies, doesn't he? Devil will tell you when you're away from the Father, boy, when you get back, he's going to kill you. <laughs> he's a liar. Amen. He ain't going to kill you. He'll be just like the Father here, but he'll fall on your neck and he'll welcome you back home. Amen. That's the kind of God he is. But see, you walk away from his plan. Linda's been telling me ever since I got out of the hospital, God's got something for us to do. Then I walk in and Miss Imogene's talking the same talk. So, you know, we just wait on the Lord. Whatever He wants to do. Let's do it. Amen? Let's do it. You walk away from His plan. His awesome plan for your life. You know, uh, maybe Tim understands this. I don't. You know, Miss Vicki Odom was in the hosp same hospital I was in at the same time. Mm -hmm. The Lord took her, left me behind. He's a sovereign God, is all I know. We have to trust Him. He knows what He's doing. His plan is awesome, it's good, and it's going to be a blessing. It is a blessing. So, you know. Getting back to the Father means we have to look at the things we've lost or sacrificed. Then it also means that we, when we come to ourselves, we begin to long for some things. Prodigal son done that. He, when he finally come to himself, he's standing there looking at a hog. Talking to hogs. Slopping the hogs. Anybody in here ever slopped hogs? You know what I'm saying? Man, they stink. <laughs> they stink, don't they? But boy, they sure taste good. I like sausage and bacon and ham and all that other stuff. But anyway, he, uh, he was out there talking to the hogs and feeding the hogs and swapping the hogs and smelling the hogs. And that's what happens when you go away from Jesus. You wind up with the hogs. But he finally come to himself, began to long, began to long for the presence of God. Well, when you get that hungry, you're getting in good shape. Longing for God's presence. Miss Gail, I long for his presence. I long to feel his touch. There ain't nothing any better. Nothing any greater. I, I appreciate the songs this morning. Those things were awesome. Especially that one, Loving Me Inside Out. <laughs> That's a great song. I never heard that before. That's awesome. But see, he longed for the presence of day. I want to go back home. The Bible says good understanding uh, giveth favor but the way of a transgressor's heart. The son had to wake up and realize, man, it's a tough life. But I just long for the presence of God. I long for daddy's presence. I want daddy's presence. And I know the Lord lives in us and the Lord lives around us and the Lord lives near us. But folks, there are times. There are just times when our soul and our spirit longs for God's manifested presence. He longed for it. Sought it out. He sought it. You know, he got thinking about the Father's place. He got thinking about home. Man, home has to be better than this. <laughs> home has to be greater than this. Dad's place has to be better than this. Uh, I've been eating some stuff uh, that I ate when I was a child. 
Linda has been fixing some stuff my mama fixed for me when I was a boy. And uh, it's good. A little different, but it's good. Sometimes, you know, we just long for the old home place. But we really, really deep in our hearts long for daddy's place. Daddy's place. It's something about daddy's place, Brother Terry. That's what he was longing for daddy's place. And then he was longing for daddy's passion. Oh, just to feel dad put his arms around me. Just to feel the father loving me. Just to feel him looking at me. Seeing his smile. Seeing his face. Makes all the difference in the world, you know. But there are those times when we just, I just like to see his face. I just like to see his smile. And I sure enjoy his touch. I enjoy his touch. So he longed for dad's place. He longed for the passion of the father, the love of the father. You know what he expected when he got back? Maybe to meet daddy with a stick. I know he's going to thrash me. I know he's going to whoop on me. I know he's going to beat up on me pretty bad. But that wasn't what he got. He was surprised when he got back. There's some things that he did not expect. There's some things when we get back to the Father we don't expect. We expect sometimes, whereas he was expecting justice and judgment, he got forgiveness. You know, they, that, that's something awesome too. They ain't nothing like being forgiven. He was forgiven by the Father. The Father did not jump on him. Well, he did jump on him. Jumped on him and loved him real good. Anyway, he got forgiveness and not judgment. That's the way the Father does. He gives us, he gives us a lot of things we don't even deserve. As a matter of fact, everything we got, we don't deserve. I don't know of anything that I got that I deserve. I don't know a thing. I got a godly woman, a godly wife. Got some precious children, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Some of the things I've enjoyed most being out of the hospital, being home, is some smiles from some grandkids. My girls come around and worked on me and helped me, wanted to kill my son-in-law and all that good stuff. <laughs> Maybe if I'd have been stronger, I might have killed him, but I didn't. But the forgiveness of the Father, so great. Somebody said that being angry and mad is bad, but the making up part is the good thing. And it is. He got forgiveness. Let me say to you, if you're away from the Father, please turn back. Because what you'll get when you get back is His love and His forgiveness, His grace, His strength, His mercy. His, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get a thrashing. You're not going to get beat up on you get His grace, His strength, and His mercy, and His forgiveness. The Bible says this, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wow! What a God! What a God that would forgive us. I mean, that boy took what the Father had worked for all his life. Took it all, blowed it, wasted it. Father still loved him and forgave him. Man, what a God. Amen, what a God. That's an awesome God. And then he got the Father and not a lecture on failure. The Father didn't lecture him on failure. He could have said, you rascal. You good-for-nothing boy of mine, you take what I got right there and blow it. 
You know, I, I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to say to you. But he didn't lecture him. He didn't lecture him. You know what he said to him? Put some shoes on his feet. Give him a new robe. Give him a ring of royalty. And he said this, For this my son was dead, but now he's alive. This my son was gone, but he's back. He didn't want to hurt that boy. He wanted to help him. The father does not want to hurt you. He wants to help you. He wants to make it easy for you to get back. He don't want to make it hard. He wants to fix it to where you can run back without any, any, any restrictions at all. He, uh, he got the father. The father was waiting on him. The father had forgiven him. The father blessed him. Restored him. You know what he said? You, you, well, you know, I'm, Father, I have sinned against you in heaven, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. That may have been true, but here's the thing. A son's a son's a son's a son. He couldn't be a servant because he was a son. See, the Father won't treat you any less than you, his child. Because you're his child. That's, that's the way he sees you. He's not going to treat you like anything lower than his son. Because he loves you. Getting back to the Father means that we understand we sacrificed some things when we walked away from him. When we left him. His presence, his provisions, and his plan and his will for your life. Also, it means though as we begin to turn, we come to ourselves as he did. It means we begin to Seek, and we begin to long for the presence of the Father. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Better when your heart begins to long for the presence of God. That's a good thing. Because when you get back to the Father, you get forgiveness. I'm sorry, if you're expecting a, a good hope and impression, you won't get it. You know why? Because he got it when he was in a far country. The famine set in, and the Bible says he began to be in war. He got to whooping in a far country. But he got forgiveness when he got back to the Father. And then, he got the Father. He got the Father back. Didn't get a lecture. What about it? You need to get back to the Father. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you today. Right now with open arms. He waits on you. Come on, young. Come on. I'm right here. I'm not going to run away from you. I'm not going to reject you. He'll never reject you. He'll never say no. You need to come back to the Father. Jesus is standing.